Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition where I'm going to try to play for a little bit more tonight before it gets too late. Um, <laughs> trying to be quiet takes a lot of air. I can't do my normal like speaking super fast, super loud, and carrying myself through. Um, anyway, I have points. Uh, I'm going to save though. I really want to get my charge upgraded. I can't decide. I think I've usually done area charge which knocks um, all enemies within range. However, I don't know if it will work. Like, if, like if I charge someone who's uh, like only has armor or something, if the people around them have shields on, will they still get knocked back? Or do I do the heavy charge? Which to me, <laughs> seems like a, you run in and then time slows down and gives you enough time to basically run back behind cover. So it's just like a forward back, forward back, forward back. And I think I remember a long time ago someone telling me that the best way to play to use the charge is as a finishing move. Um, but it's less fun that way. Like I try to do it when, when enemies are low health, but then like, you know, the other enemies around are not necessarily low health. Where's my... Look at that little slice of renegade. I thought I'd get a little more than that. That's okay. I don't I don't need more <laughs> than that. This is fine. Um Do I need to talk with anybody? Commander, what can I do for you? Do you have a minute, Miranda? Of course. I'm just finishing an operation report. I'm impressed, Shepard. So far things have gone exceptionally well. As Cerberus operations go, this is one of the best I've been a part of. Maybe that's because this isn't a Cerberus operation. Not to you, maybe. But I report directly to the elusive man. And I'm here because he wants me to be. Cerberus gave you a second chance, Commander. Maybe you should do the same for us. Mm. What did Cerberus do that made you so loyal? Hmm. I suppose you deserve to know. Do you remember when I told you how I was genetically altered? Well, that wasn't my choice. My father created me. He's a very influential man and extremely controlling. He didn't want a daughter. He wanted a dynasty. I ran away as soon as I was old and brave enough. I went to Cerberus because I knew they could protect me. How bad were the terms you and your father parted on? Shots were fired. <laughs> You seem capable of defending yourself. Why did you need Cerberus? My father invested a great deal in his dynasty. It wasn't a matter of just leaving. I knew he would continue to pursue his investments. I mean, he should have been done something to like take away her free will, but if he was gonna try to be so controlling, like he should have like implanted a chip or whatever in her, but potentially again, he didn't like how the elusive man didn't want to mess with Shepard, her father didn't want to mess with her, like in that way, like they wanted like perfection. And being a puppet isn't necessarily perfection, but it's like, well maybe you just, you just, you approached this all wrong. You made like a, you made like a super intelligent, super soldier, you know, very beautiful, intelligent, cunning woman and then you expected her to stay under your thumb? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I assume that Cerberus approves of your enhanced abilities? Of course. Cerberus fully endorses anything that advances the cause of humanity. Genetic alterations included. I wonder how far you could go though. But father and his own selfish reasons. Cerberus and the elusive man believe in a greater good. They see the bigger picture. And I feel like I have a purpose here. Instead of just like being, you know, a tool for her father or whatever. But um... I wonder how far the genetic modifications would go, you know what I mean? Like, maybe just like cybernetic upgrades, but how far until they consider you not human, you know what I mean? Like, or, or um, biological upgrades, how far until they, you know, feel like you're not human anymore? Like, it's a fine line. Deus Ex, um, okay, not human, re was it human revolution? The, like, first one of the new ones, not the second one? I still need to finish those games, anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I can still... Eh, I won't risk it yet. Who exactly is your father? A businessman, but a very wealthy one. It's ironic, my father believed deeply in a human positive agenda. He donated generously to Cerberus before I joined them. That's how I first heard about Cerberus, through my father's connections. Mm. Talk about yourself like you're just a tool to be used. By your father, by Cerberus? Maybe. 
I like to know where I fit in the world. It helps me find meaning in how I was created. You are who you are, Miranda. You don't need to make excuses for it. That's easy for you to say. We've both been engineered for greatness, Shepard. The difference is, you were great before we rebuilt you. I'm great because of it. Your spirit and personality are what make you great. It's what makes anyone great. That's kind of you. I'm not sure I believe you, but thanks for saying it. I wasn't sure if I did those upper options if it would go away. So now I want to go back and get that other one that I missed. You told me a lot about your father. What happened to your mother? I never had one. Most of my genetic material is based on my father's tissue. His Y chromosome was altered with an amalgam of desired traits from various sources. How arrogant can you be? The man is completely egomaniacal. Just another reason I had to get away from him. Mm, we already did the self-esteem thing. Thanks for your time, Miranda. I'll talk to you later. Anytime, Commander. Like, truly, you when you... I mean, I think she's a little bit forthcoming for a woman as uh, self-contained as she is. Um, but... It, when you hear her backstory and stuff, it's like, oh my gosh. Like, like you know, you, we get it in little bits and pieces. But, like, it's not like she decided to be, you know, this person. Like, like genetically modified like this, you know. Um, it was her father. And, like, I don't, I, I can see how, like, she was created. And it's, how could you, you could, like, grow up with this, like, mentality of you were cre created, but kind of in, like, a tool manner. You know, like, tools are created to be used. And she was created, and tools were created for specific purposes. And she was created for a specific purpose. So I can see how she would see that. Even as, like, wonderful, like, as talented and intelligent and beautiful as she is, I could see how she's like, I just want to know how I fit into this world. But I, but she wants to, like, make it, make enough of herself to, like, not be the, I guess she wants to have a cause that she believes in to be a tool of. Maybe she accepts herself as, like, her a tool in her own mind, you know, but, like, she doesn't want to be her father's tool, obviously. She made that decision, and she decided to join Cerberus instead. So, I think we did, we did it by messages. Yeah, it's baby. Oh, let's check out my arm. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and I just got this cool helmet, but now I'm gonna freaking... Is it... How do I... The blood dragon armor. The Cerberus armor looks dumb. <laughs> wow, it looked so much cooler in the other thing. However, this one does have the bonus of not being boob armor. So too does the blood dragon armor. Unfortunately, my N7 armor is boob armor. I think I've, I've made this joke or pointed out this thing in, a, in many, many videos, but it would be an exceedingly pain in the butt to get chest boob armor because you'd have to, like, get it fitted to your boobs. It's like they, they couldn't, like, ma I mean, they could, like, mass make them, but they'd have to make, like, armor tops in, like, every boob size <laughs> instead of just making, like, you know, like an average, like, body size thing. <laughs> like, they have to do that body size plus boob types. Like, oh, just had to custom make them every time. It's so, so silly. Uh, but let's see. Increases shields, health, and heavy ammo, heavy ammo, ammo capacity. I might have to go with this one for a bit because if this helps me get in and out of um, like situations better, I might have to do it. And it looks cool in theory. It's actually gro it's growing on me. I think the helmet's a little bulky, but. The armor itself looks really, really cool. I just don't think I'm a fan of the helmet. But I like the rest of it. Oh yeah, buddy. Alright, real quick. You guys might not see this, but I'm gonna go back. <laughs> and I'm gonna check out... I'm gonna do that other uh, conversation option with her. I'll be back in a second. Thanks for your time. Anytime, Marie. Commander. Oh my gosh, did you... I'm gonna include that. I... So the conversation wasn't actually any different. They just changed the text for that upper option. Um, but it still stayed the same verbally. However, that spin around, that like owl like neck spin thing that just happened is gonna haunt me forever. Anyway, I'll be right back. 
Okay, that was a horrifying thing to see, but also we need to make sure. Okay, I need to talk. I had to talk to Morden, talk to Miranda. Did I ask Miranda for upgrades? I think I did. We need to, at some, like, not recently, but like before when I talked to her. Um. Let me make sure I don't. Oh, Garrus, what do you- Oh, that's right, I have the collector of soul. Oh, I don't even get to test it out. Oh, man. I'll have to keep an eye on Garrus then. I was actually just talking to somebody in the comments for, like, several videos ago, I guess, at this point. But neither of us are really big fans of the Matic, um, the semi-automatic rifle, anyway. Um, because they were saying that the, uh... A semi-automatic like assault rifle is designed for like one-shot kills essentially like, like one like one shot not one shot kills like one burst kills right um, and in the game as well it's designed to do that except the problem happens when there's like barrier armor or shields in the way <laughs> any of those in the way and it makes it so that you're left like sc scrambling with like a, a rifle like trying to like like slam your hand on the trigger <laughs> and it, nothing's coming out while you're being attacked you know just for like a brief second but it feels like freaking forever when you're in the moment um mm -hmm -hmm. who do i have okay we'll try out the assault rifle eh. Sorry, did we give him? Yeah, we gave him the bin the vindicator. Anyway, not a big deal. Figure it out as we go. Commander, can I help you with something? I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. Sounds good. Have to say, you run this ship tight, and we're getting things done. We keep on track, and maybe we'll figure this out. I hope so. I'm not looking forward to the debrief if it all goes to hell. Is there something specific, or are you just checking in? <laughs> another butt shot i just realized <laughs> there's a couple there's there's equal opportunity butt shots in this game apparently i like to know my crew forget procedure tell me about yourself informal huh everything's in my file ex alliance like you no reapers or anything but i got swept under the rug too the more good you do the less they want to admit that something needed doing I think um, he doesn't. That was a little bit informal for me, uh, honestly. Where, but like, I don't know. Shepard's very like chill, but maybe not informal. You know. What led you to Cerberus? The Alliance sidelined me after Eden Prime. Ended up on a job with Miranda that Cerberus treated like an audition, and here I am. You don't seem like a results at all costs kind of guy. Cerberus history doesn't bother you. The Alliance is all politics. Somebody has to take down the bad people. Cerberus keeps that line, I'm on their side. What was your proudest career moment? Oh, uh, covered this, didn't we? It was after getting sidelined. A Batarian group was plotting to release a weaponized virus and kill the Council. Miranda and I stopped it. Strange that it wasn't bigger news. The real work doesn't get publicized, you know that. They say it's better that people don't know how fragile the system is or how close the bad guys can get. So, it never happened. Like you and the Reaper. And that's why I'm here. You make no apologies for doing what you had to. I admire that. I couldn't go back to the Alliance, not after the cover-up. They did the same to you. General Public never knew you were dead or heard the real story of the Citadel. Did you know they used you on recruitment? <laughs> you were the human ideal for like six months. Then they replaced you with a composite image they invented. Guess you didn't focus test right. Perfect example of humanity, and they still dumped you. Think I'm pervy? Hehe. <laughs> That's nice to know someone like you was thinking about me. So weird! Knowing the real story was hard. It felt like... Well, maybe this isn't really appropriate, Shepard. Commander, I should get back to my duties. Everything has to be perfect if we're going to survive this. <laughs> uh, okay. You're not blowing me wait. off that easy. Oh, wait, hold on. I am redoing this whole con- No, I am redoing this whole con- I told you guys. I told you guys. Freaking- This game- This game- Is ridiculous with Jacob. Like, tr actively trying to set you up. Like, in- But it's too easy. I can't- I'm trying to have to- I'm just gonna have to maintain, like, a neutral line the whole time. 
oh my gosh. And like, the, I've never actually had it that bad before though. Where it's like, I like Jacob well enough. Like really I do, but I know how his romance turns out. And so I'm not interested. I honestly, like he was like, uh, I think he was like third for me. Like I was like Thane, obviously, and then Garrus. And then um, Jacob, like of the men on the squad. I was like, oh yeah, Jacob's not bad. And I like, like, I like his style, but like, and he's attractive. But I know how the romance ends up, so it makes him, like, not that interesting, unfortunately. Commander, can I help you with something? I'm more interested in just... Sounds uh, good. We keep on... Tr Is there something specific? Or are you just checking in? All right, neutral. I heard you were big in the Alliance. Figured we have something in common. See? It's still... that caught attention and stirred up... She's the still Citadel. flirty. That was after the Alliance put me on leave, though. Perfect example of humanity, and they still dumped you. Uh, we're just gonna have to go the neutral route on this. Way to boil it down, Jacob. I hope you keep a better attitude about our current mission. Don't worry. This is exactly what I signed on for. If that's all, Commander, I'll get back to my duties. There's a lot to get ready. Whew! Salute. Oh, we're done with that one now. Okay. That land... landmine? I almost said landfield. Uh, man, minefield? It was a minefield. We're done with that minefield of a conversation. No for you, Commander. Conversation. Gosh, I've never, I don't think, at least that I remember, I don't think I've gotten that, like, whole, like, when she puts her hands on her hips and is like, we'll talk later. I'm like, calm down, woman. He may be, like, the only man on the ship, and you may be stuck in, like, freaking, I don't think. No, yeah? I don't think you can have a bisexual relationship in this one. Miranda's not. Do they cut that out completely? Miranda, Tally... Uh, Jack, which is the ultimate block, let me tell you. Jack straight up tells you she's bisexual, and then, like, they won't let you romance her as a woman, which makes me very upset, and someday I will get a mod to fix that. Um, oh, you can romance Kelly, but, uh, I mean, it counts, but, like, she's not, like, a companion, like, a battle companion. She's kind of your VI, <laughs> which is a little weird. Um... But yeah, they really cut back. Well, not cut back. I guess they only. They, it's only in Mass Effect Three. I think they get a little bit more. Um, but yeah, there's no. You can't like as a man. You can't date a man in this game. It's not until three. Like I said before, that you can be male shepherd and romance a man. Uh, let's see if Zaid has anything to say. I forget. I'm not not forget, but like I need to re remember like to make sure I keep it at the forefront that after every mission with people. I, uh, you doing okay there? I go down here and talk to people. I'm surprised I can't say anything about his surveillance. This mission takes me back. Yeah? So you knew Archangel from before. Interesting. Knew a lot of men taking jobs to kill the son of a bitch. I never saw the point. You and I wanted the same thing. A whole lot of mercs dead. Hell of a sniper, though. Kept himself alive with all the mercs in Omega after him. That ain't easy. I, um, I don't. I don't think there's really, like, dialogue in it. Like, in Mass Effect 1, you could stand in the elevator and have your companions talk to each other, but having Zaid and Gareth in the same room would be really, really interesting. One of my favorite things that they implement in Mass Effect 3 is that your companions wander the ship to talk to each other. And I love, love, love that. I know it can make a little bit, maybe a tiny pain to try to go find them and to talk to them. But it's not hard because on the map, you can just, like, if you go to the place they're not, and if you're like, oh, they're usually here and they're not there, you just look at your map and it tells you where everybody is. Or if you think ahead, you just check your map before you go talk to them and you'll find where they are. And it's so fun. And it makes it feel way more organic and alive that, like, these people don't just stay in one spot, you know, like, and there's a limited area that they'll be in. It's not like a town where you would like wander around and try to find somebody in, which I still don't really mind necessarily. Anyway, me and a buddy were hired to take out this one guy, Matthias, I think. Hell, I forget. Turns out it was a trap. We got jumped by a hit squad two Batarians, a Krogan, and a Hammer. <laughs> Damn, Jellyfish nearly choked me to death. Wore a neck brace for weeks to cover that up. 
underestimated a hand us since. <laughs> Wore a neck brace to cover up. Like, he was willing to wear a neck brace and, like, you know, like, look maybe kind of silly just so that people wouldn't notice the hand or, like, tentacle strings around his, like, bruises around his neck. That's funny. Also, as we'll see later, the Hanor don't generally do their own assassinations. They, um, subcontract that out to a different group of people. I should let you go. Talk more later. I want to talk with you, Zaid. There's something about him. He's that kind of guy that, like, you know is bad news, but, like, you still want him to like you, and I like sometimes hate that about my, myself. But I know a lot of people do that too. Just put some crazy tech into the main guns. It's almost doubled their power draw. But they seem pretty wicked. Indeed. Don't worry. A few tweaks to the forward capacitors, and the balance is back in line. What can we do for you, Commander? Mm. Carry on. Well I think for these two, all I have to do is show up and like listen to them talk every now and then, which is still fun. I enjoy doing that. I'll be on dialogue. So I think that's everybody. Zaid, Miranda, Garris, Jacob, Morden, yeah. I just need to remember, like, I, sometimes I get really hasty in like acquiring companions, like, no messages for that you, I Commander. forget to talk to people, and I need to not do that. Uh, did I even... I didn't even buy the FBA cufflinks. <laughs> or FB, FDA? F, FBA? FDA? Federal Department of Agriculture? And Zaid. Also, I find Zaid attractive in a strange way. I don't know. I'll say it. I'll say it now. I do. Turning rebel. Only got one sniper rifle for you, buddy. Sorry. Look at this. Judging by the quarantine reports, the plague has been completely hey, eradicated. Hey, 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 hey. This would be cooler if we were like in more action-y type poses, but it is what it is. Excuse me, I'll be back in a minute after doing this. I need to try to catch it when we're like walking, I think. That would be coolest. Okay, I've taken a few pictures. <laughs> to believe that he is dead. Works for me. Yay. Also, you guys need to start running closer to me. Are you okay there? Is that you? <laughs> you gonna make it? What is up with their pathing? Council members aboard thanked you defiant soldiers for their efforts in repelling I just wanna go over here and I think it's I think they're all done. <laughs> yep. We already talked to Gavorn. Purely human matter. <laughs> this armor looks so good. Where are they? Wh where do you do big over there? Um, no. Oh, this guy. I could have tried to intimidate this guy. I forgot. Tentatively excited. Welcome, human. What can I get for you? What kinds of things do you sell here? Friendly, salvaged parts. All kinds. Mostly legitimate. With pride, my prices are the lowest anywhere on the station. You won't find salvage cheaper than mine. I don't know if... I have things to do. Courteously, I don't know. <laughs> have a fine day. Take a look at my kiosk if you want to buy anything. It's a little difficult to see, but he has a cigar near his mouth. <laughs> oh my god. 
I can't. I, I was gonna try to point it out when we were in. Oh, hang on, this will work. Um, yeah. There's a. Yeah, El Elcor, like Godfather. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. No, it's dumb. Death model ship. Yes, I would. Yes, I don't mind if I do. Ooh. Oh, interesting. One of the few humans that have earned the privilege of serving with a sorry commander. A oh, man? What was he doing in there? Um. Ooh, he's. Oh, a creative weapon that can ele elevate target particles of matter to near infinite mass, creating a gravitational singularity. Oh my gosh. It rips. He create. How are you. What? Early designs were dangerously unstable. Project, projecting the mass effect field at an adjustable power range proved elusive. So, yeah, it was immediately went to field tests in small scale desert war on Earth, where the weapon of terrified opponents who had never seen its effect. Wow. Seriously? They used a weapon that could toss black holes, singularities, in, like, the Iranian desert? R really? Against, like, desert nomad people? Oh, of course they would. Of course they would. That's how history is written, right? It's always the people with the superior. I've been listening to uh, some about the Hundred Year War, mostly focusing on Joan of Arc, but like going, kind of going into the backstory of like the Hundred Year War before she gets involved in it, and about how the English were dominating the French, even though the French were like the powerhouses of like the European continent, but the your the the British had the Welp longbow, which was an extremely powerful weapon that couldn't just be picked up and used by like the crossbowmen of the French side. Um, Cause it took, I think the draw, the draw pull or whatever it's called is like 80 to 100 pounds on the longbow. And it's significantly less than that <laughs> on the crossbow. And uh, anyway, they dominated. And it's just, it just reminded me of like, you know, uh, also the Baltic Crusades where like the, what are they, the, Europeans, I think a lot of them were the Germans, brought in like cannons and stuff that like the like the the Baltic peoples hadn't seen before, and were just able to decimate these very like warlike, battle-hardened people with like superior technology. You know, like it doesn't take like superior tactics or like morals or like a divine intervention to make it so that if you have a bigger gun, you're gonna win. You know what I mean? And to just experiment. Like, not only, to not, to not just take this in, like, you, you could have taken this into, like, space warfare. But no, they used it, I'm infuriated, honestly. <laughs> they used it on, like, desert peoples, which is very reminiscent of, like, the, like, the wars that have been happening in the Middle East for a long time, with America largely as the, like, you know, I wouldn't say instigator, but, like, a proponent of those wars, you know? And, like, it reminds me of Iron Man, too, like, weirdly enough, right? Where it's, like, he takes his weapons and, like, showcases them off in, like, the Middle Eastern desert and then gets freaking kidnapped and, like, all this... Anyway, this makes me a little angry, honestly. <laughs> uh, I mean, it sounds cool. I'll probably buy it. I don't know. I'll buy it, but... I'm a little angry. Um, Terminus armor. This armor is dope. It looks super duper cool. Increases storm spree, speed, and shield. M weapons reserve ammo. The onboard microframe computer runs a suite of battle management software. Body heat is channeled to the base of the feet and dispersed to the ground. I, I'll buy it. Give it to me. Capacitor chest blaze. Yeah, I will do that. Hacking module. Yes. Doubles the time limit. Wait, no. Holy cow, that's expensive. Absolutely not. Nope. I, I haven't run into problems yet. Oh, is that what you're saying? It did look, um... 
It did look like Garrus died, to be fair. Oh, I can't get in there yet. Where do I go? Buy this? Do I buy it from the quarry? Oh, here they are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one day, my preciouses, I will get you. But I am very broke. Well, I'm not broke, but I... Uh, maybe I should get the heavy skin weed. I have money. I just don't want to spend too much. This looks interesting. I'll get the heavy skin weed. Holy cow. This episode... Oh, we did have a couple pauses. So I was like, this episode's gone on for a while. Um... But I'm trying to get a cool shot with my friends, but they run so far away from me. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Dang it, I, may, I might have to try to remember to do it in combat when they're closer. Um, anyway, I am going to call this episode here. So thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to my patrons. Um, to all of them, but especially to my sampling tier patrons. Uh, Scalamonger, thank you so much. And Reese Galito, thank you so much. But thank you all for your support. Oh, and thank you, Christopher, my three tier patron, who I need to decide what to get you <laughs> for your support. So, because I want to say thank you again. Um, but yes, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I hope to see you in the next one.